Good morning, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be once again joining you for another edition of the Abu Dhabi Sustainable Finance Forum. The world we live in today is vastly different from when we last met, as is the state of our environment. We are socially distancing more traveling less and utilizing technology like never before. Meanwhile, our skies are bluer, our air is fresher, and our biodiversity is recovering. This is in large part due to the reduction in CO2 emissions, resulting from a slowdown in air travel and intermittent lockdowns around the world. Some may argue that the environmental impact of COVID-19 has been the silver lining to an otherwise incredibly challenging year. But we must question the permanency of this silver lining and what this means in terms of progress towards our environmental sustainable development goals. One of the focal points of COP25 in 2019 was the importance of international carbon markets in meeting targets set out by the 2015 Paris Agreement. The idea was for countries to work together rather than in silos, to buy and sell carbon credits that would holistically reduce global carbon emissions. Because ultimately we share one planet and we share the detrimental effects on that planet. According to the Environmental Defense Fund, international emissions trading has the potential to almost double global emissions reductions between 2020 and 2035. With the rollout of vaccines already underway across the globe, and COP26 set to take place later this year, our journey towards net zero carbon emissions must remain a priority on our agendas. In the months leading up to the pandemic, we witnessed a distinct rise in carbon credits being sought after, mainly by airlines, but also mega organizations such as Amazon and Microsoft, who were key players in driving demand for the carbon offset market. In 2019, the carbon offset market stood at $600 million, which although relatively small compared to the $44 billion carbon permit market, has tripled in size over the course of three years. It's also projected to reach $200 billion by 2050. In July of last year, the price of carbon credits rose to the highest levels since 2006, but we still have a long way to go if we are to reach the targets set out in the Paris Climate Change Agreement and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. This is still achievable, but only if we rethink our business strategies with careful consideration of our learnings over the last 12 months. All companies, regardless of sector, must make a concerted effort to reduce their carbon footprint and start calculating the cost of carbon as part of their balance sheets. Furthermore, Technology remains a fundamental enabler in tackling climate change. We must continue to invest in innovation that provides us with solutions that are not only progressive, but also scalable. COVID-19 has also taught us that diverse thinking on boards is essential in tackling crises whether these may be as immediate as a global pandemic or as long-term as climate change. Companies with gender diverse boards fared significantly better in their financial performance 
than others during the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, today we stand at a crossroads. We can continue on our current path, striving to restart our economies and regain normalcy in the way we live. With this, we run the risk of reverting the state of our environment to what it was pre-COVID, perhaps even worse. Or we can take the path that paves the way towards a healthier planet, economy, and society. In fact, the measures we take to combat climate change could be the solution to preventing future pandemics. We are in the decade of action. Let's choose to take the road that leads to a more resilient future. Let's accelerate our green recovery. Thank you.